there, Avid listeners. Thanks again for tuning into Sin's Workshop. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, we're going to be talking about Book of Night by Holly Black. This is Holly Black's first adult fantasy. Holly Black uh, is a best-selling young adult author, best known for her Cruel Prince trilogy. Now, I've never read Holly Black before, but I've always been intrigued with her books. I see them. I want to read them. I just have so much that I need to read. However, I did make the effort to purchase Book of Night because the hardcover was absolutely beautiful. So I bought it so that I could read it. <sighs> the heavy sigh. Um, I didn't love it as much as I thought I was going to. It was very... To me, it felt like it was all over the place. You know, the story follows Charlie. She lives in a modern contemporary setting. So it's a, it is an urban fantasy. And what urban fantasy is, it takes realistic fiction and it combines a sort of fantastical element to it here we have glomis you know people who can alter shadows um other people who can even control their own shadows you just have to feed it with blood right so basically shadow magic and it's kind of cool i did like this interesting aspect of fantasy in this modern contemporary setting to me it was interesting and you have charlie she's an incredibly flawed character she is a con artist as well as a bartender. And she's trying to get out of her con artist ways. Like, she doesn't want to be a con artist anymore. She wants to do better. She wants to get out of it. She wants to help her sister go to college. She wants to do so much more than what life has kind of handed her. And the story does go back and forth between the past and the present settings. Not just exploring her past, but also exploring another figure's past, um, the person the story opens up with. And I think that that was really interesting. There was a fluidity to that. It wasn't really jarring to go from back to forth, to go from one person to another person. I did think that that was very fluid. It flowed very well. It kept the momentum of the story. My biggest issue with the storytelling <laughs> was when it comes to the Glomis community, she adds a whole lot of unnecessary detail. And it the problem is, it seems to come at really, really odd times. So she's explaining to the reader what these positions are within the Glomis community. And again, I don't think it was... 100% necessary at those times because to me it felt kind of jarring and it felt like a whole lot of bogged down information that didn't seem to add to the plot line she was building. It was just world building. So for me it was very distracting. It seemed to come at really odd moments and the one thing my teachers at college you know kind of nailed into me was show, don't tell. <laughs> there was lots of telling here. And I think that really slowed down the pacing of the novel for me. And it really did make me lose interest in the story. Because at points, I was just like, how is this important? This is rather unnecessary information at this, at this po point. And doesn't need to be that detailed. You want to mention, oh, this position, who gets this position, fine, awesome, great. But then to go into more and more and more details, like, get over it. I'm done with it. I don't need this much information. So for me, it really did slow down the pacing of the story. And then there were just <laughs> the overall, to get from point A to point B, you know, from beginning to end. Again, she's a con artist. There's a whole lot of of segues. And for me, as I was reading it, I was just like, how is this important to what you're trying to do here? Like, what is this? Like, it, In the grand scheme of getting things to get to the end, a lot of things do make sense. And you're just like, oh, but the way the story was written, it was just like, is this really important? Is this really what you should be focusing on, Charlie? Um, so, I mean, it was just... For me, it seemed to pull in a lot of different directions, and it really was distracting for me. So I really wasn't able to connect to the characters because Charlie's really flawed, but I don't feel like there was a whole lot of character development as far as she's concerned. Yet, yeah, 
You get from the beginning she wants to do better. You get snippets of her past. But it doesn't seem... She's known for making bad decisions. And she knows she makes bad decisions. She knows what a bad decision is before she even makes it. And she still does it. At times, that makes her kind of charismatic because she's so flawed and you can see why she's making the bad decisions because she wants to do better. And she thinks if she does this one bad thing, it'll help her do better, right? But, oh my God, I was just so, I, I guess, bored. I was distracted, not bored. I was just distracted. Constantly thinking, how is this important to the story? Like, Charlie, re- are you really should be doing this right now. It was distracting for me as a reader, so I was left underwhelmed overall. Like, I I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to enjoy it, and that's the part that really, really sucks for me because I wanted to enjoy it. I wanted to like this story, but I wasn't able to really love it the way I thought I did. I like it, sure, but I don't love it, unfortunately. So I have to give... Book of Night, three out of five stars. And that's a soft three. Again, I was intrigued. It's been announced that Holly Black is going to be doing a sequel to the to this. And I think, okay, you know what? I will read the sequel. I am intrigued enough to see how this is going to play out, if there is going to be a sequel. So I can't give it, like, anything less than a three. Like, if you have me interested to continue reading, yes. I I have to give you, you know, props for that. But I will say this book doesn't make me want to read more of Holly Black, unfortunately. It left me underwhelmed. It left me slightly confused. And I wasn't really into it as much as I had hoped I would be. That being said, if you want to go ahead and purchase the book, I will include links in the description of the podcast of where to purchase it. And on that note, I hope you all will continue to support me by liking the podcast and sharing it with all your book-loving friends and subscribing to it. You can also become a supporter on Buy Me a Coffee or on Anchor FM, my recording platform. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and as always, happy reading.